to AFTV in association with Angerati. Uh, we welcome to the studio now uh, Taz and Varipur, uh, who's partner at the Abraj Group. And uh, Taz, firstly, welcome. Nice to see you again. We, we keep meeting once a year. You know, it's been four years now. That's true. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and what I like about talking to you is you always bring something new, and uh, um, you've had a eventful year. Uh, we were talking last year, uh, uh, you were just at the tail end of the Africa 50 uh, thing, but just tell us your story. You, 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 uh, you, you set up your own um, uh, development vehicle and uh, you've ended up at the Abraj Group. Just, just <laughs> very quickly, to, just tell us what, what happened there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Adam. Uh, last year you told me that when I was about to leave Africa 50, you want to interview me this, this year yeah. and ask me what happened in the 12 months. And I told you that I promise it's going to be eventful and it is eventful. Actually, after I left Africa 50, I joined a very small development company and I, I actually did that on purposely because it was set up by my colleagues from African Development Bank a year before I left the bank. And the, the reason for that was uh, we, through our experience in the continent, we realized that while people are talking about and focusing about a financing gap in the continent, actually it's not a financing gap, but actually it is a project gap, meaning that not enough number of projects are coming to the market for different reasons, actually. And then we realized that actually if you don't get into this field, you are not going to be solving the acute problem. And I can testify that with the number of projects closed in 2015, while we are working on Temis and then transferring ourselves to Abraj, actually in 2015, 23 uh, energy projects reached financial close in the continent, while we need actually 30 billion investments every year, yeah. only 23. And out of 23, 16 of them were in South Africa through the refit uh, program, renewable energy program, and uh, only seven in sub-Saharan Africa. That's this, quite polarizing. Yes, right? you, 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 yes. Uh, uh, this tells you that actually it's not a problem of financing, it is a problem of producing bankable projects for the market. This is something we saw in a very early um, years at the bank and then that's why actually we targeted setting up Africa, uh, after Africa 50 Temis, which is a project development company. Why there is a gap here? There are a number of reasons. We know that normally in the um, in this kind of markets, this kind of projects should be offered to public by the governments. But up to today, everybody talks about uh, the governments not having enough human capacity to prepare those projects up to a certain level and then offer the private sector through tenders. But nobody looks at actually the cost side of it. Project development is costly, and project development today in Africa is almost like 10% of the total project cost, meaning that if you have three priority projects, three of them at the cost of like $500 million, you need $50 million to develop those projects. And no government has these uh, allocations in their budgets. So that's why they cannot produce projects for the private sector. So, so, so what, we, uh, what we're looking at, so, uh, so you, uh, uh, you set up your own business and then uh, uh, you got bought by the approach group. Yes. Um, why did that happen? What were you doing? Uh, there that was of interest to the Abraj group because mm -hmm. again no one buys a business unless they see a value in it and like a, oh look there's, there's something different going on here yeah. this can actually help us um, deliver more projects because I would imagine what you just said yes. was maybe part of the issue that okay look we, we've got the money but these things just aren't coming to us quick enough so yeah. this is exactly you push the button actually uh, Abraj knows Africa very well Abraj invested in the last 10 years over 3 billion in the growth uh, market uh, uh, opportunities and uh, they are fully aware of the uh, continent and when they decided to get into energy infrastructure they knew that if they would like to invest in this area there are not enough projects to finance so that's why actually Abraj decided to bring over a development arm so uh, it's not just only a capital, but uh, the other reason not enough projects are coming to the market, private sector is not willing to get into this area because they are not uh, quite sure how long it will be the project development and then how fast they will be going. And uh, most of the time, actually, projects are developed in Africa by local developers. Obviously, this is a good news, but local developers, they lack financing skills and they lack financial capacity, but also they are not fully aware of uh, and they don't have the understanding 
understanding of the international requirements. So at one point they got stuck. So that's where actually the smart capital comes to the table. What is a smart capital? Meaning that not just only give the most risky capital to people to develop projects, but bring that with the expertise, experience, and knowledge. This is what Temis was offering. Along with the development capital, we bring actually the skill set. This is what Avraj saw in the market. When they decided to get into energy infrastructure, they decided to bring a team with the knowledge, expertise, and experience in the continent. They can couple that with the development capital to produce more projects for themselves. So, so that leads us to that uh, point that, you know, when you and I had the brief discussion preparing for this interview, that what you've actually got is a platform Mm -hmm. which has got a private equity vehicle, it's got an asset management mm -hmm. vehicle. What does that combination give you? Is it purely about solving that, uh, uh, not just speed to market, so I'm putting it in, in, in simple terms to try and pull out the reason mm -hmm. for this. Yes. Is uh, So you've got the money and you say, right, okay, but if we have this platform that also manages the assets, mm -hmm. we can get things on the ground faster, that means the, the money mm -hmm. equation gets ticked, but we also know that these projects will be mm -hmm. done well, delivered well and sustainable. Is, is that the essence of it? Uh, you can say that, but uh, let me explain a little bit uh, further. Uh, this model is actually accompanying the asset throughout the life cycle. So actually we have three components. One is the development side, so you bring the projects from feasibility st stage to all the way to the bankability, where actually private equity comes in. With this tool, we address the most acute problem in Africa. In Africa, most of the time, development capital is absent, and when the equity comes, it takes much more longer because equity comes at the end tail, and they have to do their uh, due diligence. So when you bring this two together in one vehicle, basically you shorten the time frame for the delivery. Right. And then, still, in Africa, uh, actually exit from infrastructure assets is uh, very slow. So that's why we also create an asset management company. But having said that, under this infrastructure, energy infrastructure platform, we also target to capture the premium at different stages of the project. So much more higher uh, the premium at the uh, beginning because project development capital is very similar to venture capital, high return and the short employment time. And then you have a private equity uh, stays with medium term and uh, gets like medium returns and then lower returns of the asset management company. Each component has different risk and reward uh, mechanism. And you need therefore, different actors in yes, play, Yes, right? therefore attracts different type of capital. So we don't expect that all our uh, investors are going to come all three components, but some of them are going to come to the first two, some of them are going to come to last two, some of them are going to come to only uh, one of those components. This is a comprehensive vehicle, and then actually we are offering an innovation to the market. Right. And uh, so on that uh, comprehension side as well, let, let, let's move the... Uh, uh, the, the interview along in terms of also the speed to market. There have been a, there have been a lot of people uh, um, sort of sat here, hey, we're moving a lot faster because renewable and, and renewable technology, uh, and it's not just about the technology, it's just, you could just put it on the ground a whole lot faster. But there is still an issue, right? The renewables alone is not the solution. a solution. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were talking off air, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but, uh, you know, there's this notion of hybrid power. And that must be very interesting yeah. to you as well, that, it, that you can actually add even more complexity to what you've just described by having these three <laughs> layers, but you can also uh, be a sort of hybrid power, hybrid technology uh, yes. business. That's, that's true. Uh, but having said that, under this umbrella I just described as an energy infrastructure platform, we have uh, certain verticals uh, covering different kinds of subsectors of energy, including like hydro, solar, geothermal, wind, and gas. So coming back to the renewables and then how we can scale up renewables, obviously everybody would like to increase the renewables in Africa, but we cannot ignore the problem of the base load. That's why we have to look at the combination of clean base load, which is combined cycle uh, gas technology, and that will actually facilitate more megawatts for the renewable energy. Because when you look at the renewable energy side, what is uh, considered as the base load from the renewable energy is up to, up to certain degree is the hydro, and the other one is geothermal. These two are very geographic specific, so you mm. cannot have in every single country. That 
therefore, I mean, in the um, next uh, 10 years, we will still see combined cycle gas power in number of places actually as the base load to facilitate more megawatts in the renewable energy. So in Abraj, we are agnostic. We look at all these subsectors because we know that the most important thing in the continent right now is incremental megawatt. This is the most important thing. How much megawatt you will be adding? It is not like only renewable or uh, clean energy. So uh, th this is where Temis's expertise come in. Actually, prior to joining Abraj, Temis demonstrated to market that they can take any subsector projects, meaning that any uh, hydro or uh, gas or others, in less than three years to the financial clause. This comes with the understanding of the requirements of the government. This, this comes with the understanding of the lenders, understanding of the insurance providers, understanding of the equity. So basically, when you look at everybody's understanding and then you know this, the, the details, People you can prepare you. projects yeah. in line with that so you don't go back and restructure your project and lose time. So this is one thing. And the second thing is, once you know the market, actually much more easier for you to move forward. Obviously now, Abraj is a larger platform. With Abraj um, uh, capacity is added to Temis, Temis might go much more faster and actually Abraj might go much more faster in energy sector. Well, let's talk about that speed as well as we're coming to the end of our close, because I know one of your frustrations is all about uh, there's too much talk, <laughs> not enough groundbreaking. You know, yes. because, because at the end of the day, you can you can have all these talks and people can be talking to each other and say, yeah, I'll give you the cash. Yes, you can take it. I trust you. You know, I know you do all the finance. But someone at some point or the other needs to put a shovel in the ground and get mm -hmm. on with it. Yeah. So what are you seeing um, now and what are you hoping to achieve in terms of actually getting more shovels on the ground, getting mm -hmm. more projects out of you, because you know, I know you're quite, you're, you're focused, you're, you're ambitious, you, you know that that wants to happen. Okay. What's your vision? I think I'm going to come back again, the advantage of uh, being acquired by, acquired by Abraj. Uh, Tennis had all the skill sets, understanding of the market, very necessary networking, and then technical skill set. But the uh, missing component was the capital, which is actually on the table today with Abraj. So we talk about smart capital. Smart capital comes, the development capital, experience, knowledge, and um, expertise. So meaning that capital, actually the actual capital, um, the hard capital meets with the human capital. And then the next one I would like to discuss is actually partnership capital. So uh, we know that today what is available in the market. Uh, our model is actually partnering with strategics, partnering with uh, debt providers in early stage. In any case, we are able to bring the development capital and equity. These are the most uh, needed for ingredients. Once we have this in place, actually it is much more faster to go forward. So today, in every single country we get in, we set up these partnerships in the first uh, projects. Usually we target the first project not very big, maybe small to medium range. Yeah. Once you set up this partnership and going larger megawatts and using this partnership capital, it's much more easier. Right. So we're looking at your aim is to get that life cycle down, get, uh, get more projects on the ground. Uh, how, how many projects are you actually looking at getting on the ground in, in the next sort of year? So, so, when, okay. so I'm, I'm setting up next year's interview here. You see what I'm doing, right? It's like a, it's a, it's a, so we can just follow this progression. Uh, it's, it's easy, Adam. Our short term uh, for Africa is we are currently working on 1,800 megawatts. Right. And then we believe that we will uh, reach financial close in within the next two years for those projects. But obviously, this is not our ambition. Uh, our ambition is much more bigger. For Africa, in the next uh, five years, our target is going to be something around 5,000 megawatts. We believe we can deliver this. Okay, so I'm going to hold you to that timeline. <laughs> so every year we'll. Every year we're going to track uh, down to that uh, uh, timeline. Taz, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time. It's yes. been a pleasure talking to you. Same. And uh, thank you for being here. And thank you as well for watching. Thank you.